Hey everyone, Jackie with Full Moon Loom Designs. Today I'm going to do a little demo of this mini sandblaster kit that I picked up. Um, it was priced at 60 I got it on sale, uh, I think it was maybe 20% off uh, at a local shop, uh, kind of local, down in Sleepy Eye, Minnesota, uh, Sleepy Eye Stained Glass. And I have seen them online. Uh, you can do a search for Badger brand uh, mini sandblaster. But basically it came with a small can of the propellant, a bottle of the aluminum oxide abrasive, and then in my cabinet here, which I'll go into in just a bit, there is also the jar with the tip on it, and then here's what we'll connect to that canister um, of the propellant. And my cabinet, my husband put it together for me. It is a nice uh, gasketed tote by Sterlight. And you can see, I believe this was a 54 quart. Um, I can double check that the label's been pulled off. But what he used was these toilet flange. I think they're called toilet flanges. And we attached gloves, I should say he, I didn't do this, he did. <laughs> and he attached the gloves with uh, adjustable clamps and then actually dissected a respirator to add a couple of vent holes but keep them sealed off. Uh, and so far I've only done one small piece and this seemed to be sufficient. It didn't seem like it was really uh, blowing a lot of air in here. So I'm going to demonstrate using it. Um, I will add a little more of the oxide stuff to the jar. It says to start about three quarters of the way full, but I'll walk through setting that all up in the next part of video in which I'm going to have my GoPro set up. So I'll be back in just a sec. All right, I believe I'm rolling now, having a little issue with my GoPro, uh, probably more likely an Apple update. <laughs> but uh, anyway, I am going to hook up this, the instructions come in the kit and I'm going to attach this regulator uh, to the top of the propellant. The mm -hmm. propellant that came in the kit is just a small can. They do make larger cans. There's one that uh, I picked up also at the glass shop. You can also buy more of the abrasive, uh, and I did find links online to find more of that. Uh, but in the instructions, they tell you if you start to attach this and it's it's leaking or hissing, you just want to loosen this uh, the valve up. So this should be okay because I just used it the other day. So I'm gonna make sure that's on there nice and snug. I don't know if you can hear that, but if I turn it, there's air that will come out. So I'm gonna leave it loose at this point until we get it hooked up to the blaster. And I'm probably gonna end up cutting back some of this because it's way longer than I need in this little cabinet. But basically now I'm just going to attach the other end here. And I have uh, filled the canister uh, about three-fourths full, which is what they recommend in the instructions. And I gotta say, the instructions were pretty basic. There really wasn't a lot of detail in there. So I'm gonna get this on here. And then basically once I get it into the cabinet, I'll be pressing this down. I'm not going to do it out here because I don't want to throw sand everywhere. But at this point, I'm going to put it inside my cabinet. And I learned the other day that I'm still a little clunky trying to use the gloves. So I'm going to make sure I can pick everything up as needed before I put the lid on. For some reason I keep wanting to turn it so that this end, the small end, but it's actually this end that it's going to come out of. So I can get a hold of this, I can suppress that, I may need to adjust the regulator, tighten it a bit. And then what I'm going to work on today is I did a piece of glass a while back and I really like it, but I thought this would be a great example of one that may look really pretty with a matte finish. On the outside, it does have the luminescent glass, and on the inside, it is just uh, yellow transparent. And again, I like it the way it is, but I thought this would be a great example to see a before and after. So this is a piece that I'm gonna work on blasting. 
Put that in there. Hopefully I can pick it up with my glove. It's a little cheap and set it up right. And now at this point I am going to put my lid down. Oh, I'll drop it anyway. I'm going to put the lid down. Okay, hopefully I can pick that up. Also, this is a little taller than I would normally want to work. Uh, I probably would have it a little bit lower. But yeah, I should be able to handle that. So the nice thing is, again, this tote does have gasketing inside the lid. I'm going to turn it slightly so hopefully you can see what I'm doing and move a little closer to the camera. And now we will attempt. I keep wanting to use this arm to reach inside there and I from out here and I realize oh I have to use my glove. So I'm gonna try holding on to it and picking up the container. Again, I gotta cut down this uh, connection hose because it's way longer than I need and a little bit bulky. So now I'm just trying to adjust stuff in my hands to really get the hang of this. And the gloves are a little bit big for me, but I don't know that we could have gotten any smaller ones attached with the clamp. So I think I'm ready. So I can hear it. I don't really see a lot happening. I'm gonna adjust that pressure just a bit. turning it. Again, the gloves are a bit bulky. So I definitely see sand moving in there, or not sand, but the abrasive. A little bit hard to see what I'm doing. And my canister just fell over. It could be my propellant might be low too, because again, it is just a small can. trying to give it an all over brush with this. I'm sure I'll have to come back in with it. But then I'm going to turn the camera off while I let this sit and settle a bit. Okay. So we'll take a look at it in just a few minutes and see uh, if we see any difference yet. I may again adjust that pressure. I don't think I was able to turn it very well uh, inside there with the gloves on. But when I come back um, I will have let this sit for a few minutes. I'm going to open it up so that I don't have a cloud. <laughs> and uh, we'll take a look at the dish and see what we need to continue. All right, so I let this sit for a few minutes, made a cup of coffee, came back, uh, took it out. There are a few spots where it might be starting to etch, but in general, it didn't look like it did a lot. And it could just be that little can of propellant. Uh, I did end up attaching the larger canister and I'm gonna put this back in and give it another try. So, and also I don't think I can make this uh, air hose any shorter. So all I did was wrap it around the can to get it out of the way. I think it's just going to take some uh, time to get used to this. Also, normally I would be working on a shorter surface because I'm, I'm not very tall, so trying to see this is a little bit of a challenge. 
here we go. I'm just going to try to start going over each petal section and then come out to where my thumb is and move it. And once again, I picked it up backwards. Let's try that. There we go. Seems like it might be doing a little better this time, but I will give it a few more blasts here, and then again I'll let it sit and come back to it and open it back up. I am using quite a bit of the abrasive. It looks like it's getting pretty low in the canister, and you can reclaim it. I need to see what if I have some screen mesh that's fine enough for that. that sit and we'll come back and take a look at it again. All right, so here is the bowl after blasting. This is really hard to get in the right light. Uh, basically about two thirds of it has kind of the blasted finish, but some of it I must not have gotten. Yeah, I'm really not able to capture that in the camera here, but um, it will work. Hopefully you can see that there. It will work at uh, the etching or the air erasing. And I think if I just put this back in there and uh, add a little bit of stuff, cause I'll show you in just a second. This little jar was three fourths of the way full and that's what is left in there. So a lot in the bottom of the cabinet that can be reclaimed, it just has to be filtered and screened. So in general, this is kind of fun. It's gonna take some practice. And it's not like I do would do a lot of sandblasting, but like I said, this piece I thought would be kind of cool if it had a little bit more of a matte finish. Um, but if I can't end up getting it looking even, I may just throw it back in a slump mold and fire polish it back shiny again. So we'll see. But anyway, I just wanted to do a quick demonstration. Hope this has helped if you are considering a small sandblasting kit like this where you don't have to have the compressor. And granted, it probably would work better with a compressor, but using what I got. Thanks for watching.